Welcome back to AP Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video, we're going to be learning about enthalpy and how to calculate that and what it actually means. Now, in our last video, we learned about total internal energy changes and how to calculate that using delta E equals Q plus a W. But in this video, we're talking specifically about enthalpy. Now, enthalpy can be defined in a few different ways, but the most common way is to call it the heat that's associated with the formation and breaking of bonds in a substance. And in AP chemistry, in, in general chemistry, we tend to calculate change in enthalpy as being the amount of heat, you know, thermal energy, that's absorbed or released over the course of a chemical reaction. And we use the abbreviation delta H to represent change in enthalpy. That delta H is what we're going to be calculating in this, le in this lesson, in this video, and also in the next lesson as well, in lesson 15. Now, something that we need to remember, something that is just a fundamental uh, fact in chemistry, is that when a bond is formed, heat, you know, enthalpy, is released. That is an exothermic process. So when you form bonds, it releases heat. On the other hand, when you break bonds, that absorbs heat. That's an endothermic process. Now, some students have a little trouble grasping that because for some reason, it seems like some students think it's the opposite, okay? But it's not. When you form a bond, it releases heat. When you break a bond, it absorbs heat or it, you have to invest heat or invest energy in order to make that happen. Now. When we say exothermic, endothermic, what does that mean? Well, exothermic essentially means that we are releasing heat by the system into the surroundings. And so if you have, for example, a reaction taking place in solution, uh, that means that the surroundings, including the water that's in the beaker, is going to get hotter. And so if you stick a thermometer in there, the temperature is going to go up. And so when we think exothermic, you know, normally we think the surroundings get warmer. It, things are going to get hotter, okay? Most chemical reactions are exothermic. And we'll talk more about that here in a few uh, videos from now. I think in lesson 16, we'll be talking about why that's the case. Now, when we say endothermic, that means that heat is being absorbed into the system from the surroundings. And so heat is going from the surroundings into the system. Most reactions are not like this. And we'll talk about uh, why that's the case here later on, like I said. Now, that means that the surroundings get colder. And so if you stick a thermometer into a solution where a, an endothermic reaction is taking place, it's going to, that temperature is going to go down, isn't it? Because the, the water in that solution, well, that's part of the surroundings and so it's going to get colder. So you put your hand on an endothermic reaction, you're going to feel cold. You put your hand around an exothermic reaction, you're going to feel hot or maybe even get the burned. So uh, exothermic versus endothermic. Now let's talk about this as it relates to an actual chemical reaction. So here we have a simple reaction. We have 2Na plus Cl2 gas, chlorine gas, yields 2 sodium chloride formula units. Now, the delta H for this is negative 822 kilojoules per mole. Now, what this means, this actually means something. It tells us kind of what the recipe is for this reaction. There's a stoichiometry here. This tells us that when two moles of sodium chloride are reacted with one mole of chlorine, there's understood, understood to be a one there, we're going to make two moles of sodium chloride. And we knew that already, but it also tells us that we're going to release 822 kilojoules in that process. Okay, that's what that means. By the way, this negative sign right here, that tells us that this process, this reaction is exothermic. Okay, that means that if you put your hand around this reaction, it's going to feel hot. Now, what happens if we decide to flip this reaction around? If we have the reverse of this, which we can carry out, by the way, we can take the reverse of this. But notice what happens to the sign of delta H. It becomes the opposite of what it was before. So it was negative, and now it's positive. And this basically is telling us that if we take two moles 
of sodium chloride solid and we decompose it, we're going to get two moles of sodium metal and we have that one mole of chlorine gas again. I'll put a one there to show that. And 822 kilojoules of heat are going to be absorbed. That's what the positive means there. The positive sign tells us that that reaction is endothermic. So here we have two uh, possibilities. Okay, two reactions. One is just the reverse of the other. And we have to flip the sign on delta H. That's how that works. Now, let's use this to work a stoichiometry problem. We've worked lots of stoichiometry problems in this course so far, but we're going to work a stoichiometry now in terms of heat and how that works. It's really the same, except now we're going to use the delta H as part of a mole ratio in our stoichiometry. So in the reaction below, 10.0 grams of sodium chloride are produced. Determine the amount of heat released in this process in kilojoules. So once again, we're going to start with what's given to us. We'll take the 10 grams of NaCl and write that down. And we're going to treat this just like any other stoichiometry problem that we've worked. And we've worked lots of stoichiometry. If you've been keeping up with these videos, we, we've done normal stoichiometry. We've done uh, limiting reactant problems, percent yield. We did solution stoichiometry back in lesson 10. Well, now we're doing heat stoichiometry. But in any stoichiometry problem, what is the first thing that you've got to do? I hope you said, or thought to yourself, convert to moles, right? All roads lead to moles. So we're going to convert to moles as our first step. So in our uh, conversion factor, I put kilojoules down here at the end as a reminder that that's what we're converting to. So in our first step, convert to moles. So grams have to go on the bottom. Moles have to go on top. Now, how many grams are in one mole of NaCl? Well, we can look that up on the periodic table and add them together. I think it's about 58.44. So we can cancel grams top and bottom. We're now in moles of sodium chloride. Now, what's the second step in, the, in, a, in pretty much any stoichiometry problem that we have with a reaction? Well, it's the mole ratio, isn't it? So we're going to convert to some other thing in our mole ratio here. So what are we converting to? It's not any substance. We're converting to heat, to kilojoules. So I'm going to put kilojoules on the top. And of course, moles of sodium chloride on the bottom. So just like this. And according to the balanced equation, kilojoules would be negative 822. And how many moles of sodium chloride? Well, it's a 2. So I'm going to put a 2 right in there. So negative 822 kilojoules for every 2 moles of sodium chloride. That's the mole ratio. Well, guess what? I've kind of done steps 2 and 3 in the same step here. So I don't really have a step 3. So I can cancel moles top and bottom. And I can cancel sodium chloride top and bottom. And I'm in kilojoules. So on my calculator, I take 10.0, divide by 58.44, times negative 822 divided by 2. And my answer is negative 70.3 kilojoules. So that negative sign right there tells me that heat is being released. Now this is an exothermic process. That's what the negative sign tells us. So that means that 70.3 kilojoules of heat are going to be released in that process of making the, those 10 grams of sodium chloride. Okay, so stoichiometry problems are just the same as they've always been. We're just throwing in the delta H value as part of that uh, mole ratio here. Now, let's figure out how to calculate delta H. Okay, delta H. We're actually going to learn several ways to calculate that, but in this video, we're going to be learning how to calculate delta H using bond enthalpies. So what that means is if we have the number of uh, the bond enthalpies involved in all the bonds that are broken, and we subtract all the bond enthalpies for the bonds that are formed, we're going to get delta H for the reaction. So let's take this reaction right here. And this is a reaction we perform many times in the lab. Anytime we burn methane, you know, light a Bunsen burner, you're carrying out this reaction. So 
we're going to use these bond enthalpies. Now these are normally going to be given to you, maybe in a textbook or on a paper or something like that. And so these will be given to you, uh, or perhaps on a homework assignment if you're working through my problems. Every different bond has a different energy associated with it. So that's kind of interesting. Notice that these double bonds, like the carbon-oxygen double bond, has a whole lot more energy associated with it than, say, a uh, plain old carbon-hydrogen single bond, or even an oxygen-hydrogen single bond. You know, So those uh, double bonds tend to have more energy associated with them, don't they? All right, now in order to do this, we're going to have to figure out which bonds are being broken. And to do this, you have to know the shapes of the molecules. So you're going to have to draw the Lewis structure for this. Now, since we're a little short on time, I'm just going to put this up here for you. So here's the CH4 molecule. You know how to draw this by now if you're at this point in, in AP chemistry. So we see that there are four carbon-hydrogen bonds that are being broken. So we take four times the 413. That's the carbon-hydrogen bond enthalpy. That's where our 1652 comes from. Next, we have two oxygen molecules. So we have the molecules that look like this. The OO double is 495 a kilojoules per mole. We have two of those. There's one there and one here. So when we multiply that, we get 990 uh, uh, kilojoules total there. Now, on the other side, we have carbon dioxide, which looks like this. And we have two of the carbon-oxygen double bonds to deal with. So it's 2 times 799. So we have 1598 kilojoules for that one. And then two water molecules look like this. We have the oxygen-hydrogen single bond we're working with. And we have four of those, as you can see. One, two, three, four. And that's at 467 apiece. So that's 1868 kilojoules. So we have to keep track of our math here. So the sum of the bonds that were broken, you know, to, in making a, a reaction, the bonds broken, that's on the reactant side all the time, isn't it? So 2642, and which bonds were formed? Well, you form bonds on the product side. So that's, a uh, total of that is about 3466. So we subtract bonds broken minus bonds formed. So 2642 minus 3466. So our delta H is about negative 824 kilojoules. And that's what you'd expect, because this is a very exothermic reaction, isn't it? You've seen a Bunsen burner. You don't want to stick your finger in there, you know, to see how hot it is, but you know how hot it is. It's giving off a lot of heat. So it makes sense that this is a very negative number. Okay? Let's try another example here. Let's say we have this reaction. We're going to use this reaction and the bond enthalpy data we're given here to determine the hydrogen-hydrogen bond enthalpy. So let's see if we can do that. Now this is a little different, isn't it? Because it actually tells us what delta H is. You know, it's given to us in the problem. We're not calculating that. We have to figure out what is the hydrogen-hydrogen bond enthalpy. Well, we can do that too. So we're going to start by drawing these out here. So N2H4 looks something like this. I think we've drawn that before in, in an earlier lesson. So when we uh, look at this here, we can say that uh, we have one nitrogen-nitrogen single bond. So that's 297. And we have four of these nitrogen-hydrogen single bonds. So that's four times 460. So we're going to have one of the, the 297s. We're going to have four of the 460s. So now we have the nitrogen-nitrogen. And when you draw this out, it's a triple bond. Okay, Some of you have done enough of these just to know that already. But if not, you know, draw it out, and you can see it's a triple bond. And so that is 950. That's kind of the granddaddy of these, isn't it? It has a really high bond enthalpy. So, you know, 1 times 950 is 950. And we don't know what the HH bond enthalpy is. We have two of them. So let's just call that N. We'll call it N. We have two of them, so it's 2N. So the sum of the bonds that are uh, broken would be 297 plus 1840. That's 2,137 kilojoules. And then the bonds formed over here will be 950 plus 2N, so it's just 
Well, we'll just say 950 plus 2n for right now. And we know that delta H equals bonds broken minus bonds formed. So we just plug in delta H is plus 317. Bonds broken would be 2137. I'm going to leave off units just for, for clarity here so that we don't get confused here. And then bonds formed, we're going to subtract the quantity negative or subtract the quantity 950 plus 2n. So basically we're just solving for n here. So do the arithmetic on here, uh, subtract 2137 from both sides, and then add the 950, and we get this, and we get 2n equals 870. Divide both sides by 2, we get that n is 435. So we can say that the hydrogen-hydrogen single bond has a bond enthalpy of 435 kilojoules per mole. So a little bit more complex problem, but still doable. Delta H equals bonds broken minus bonds formed. I hope you learned something here. Hope you learned how to calculate delta H from bond enthalpies. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like I said, I'm Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching AP Chemistry for over 20 years, and I want uh, you to get a five on your AP Chemistry or make an A in your general chemistry class. Uh, hit that thumbs up, uh, thumbs up button, excuse me, if you learned something, and hope you subscribe to my channel so that we can keep on learning more chemistry together. More chemistry